Hey everyone, Adam here. So I uh, just wanted to quickly go over um, a KDE desktop environment. Now, as I said from my previous video, one of the most overwhelming things uh, in Linux can be choosing your desktop environments. And uh, honestly, uh, if you have the time, I encourage you to play around with as many desktop environments and or window managers as possible. But if you're kind of pressed for time, um, again, the goal of this series is just to kind of maybe uh, narrow it down to two or three that you might be interested in. And then uh, the two or three you might be interested in, maybe just make a USB stick and then play around with them just to see which ones maybe you uh, think that uh, you would prefer for a more of a long-term install. Anyway, this is uh, a KDE. Uh, I believe I'm using Kubuntu 14.04. Again, this may not be the best version of using KDE. I believe a lot of people think OpenSUSE um, uses KDE better. But again, this is just a broad overview and just to give you an idea of what KDE, the desktop environment, is all about. So <clears throat> with that, um, I'll show you a little bit of the KDE desktop environment. I'm not that great at it. Um, so this definitely won't give you any tips or tricks on uh, workflow or anything like that. But again, it's just a broad overview of KDE. So here you just have the start menu. And uh, to me, this reminds me very much of kind of like a Windows 7-ish uh, layout. Now, again, all of this stuff can be customizable. Um, here, uh, File Manager, you have uh, Dolphin. And one of the things that um, some people love about KDE and some people hate about KDE is that there are tons and tons of uh, GUI type settings, meaning that, that everything can be really highly configured through the uh, graphical user interface. So, and I'll uh, try to give some examples of that as we go through this, but um, the default uh, file manager Dolphin has tons and tons of options when you try to configure it. Um, and to me, uh, this is one of the things that I'm not particularly why I choose not to use KDE is that to me, a lot of the choices are a little bit too overwhelming. And again, that's just my personal preference. So, um, and I'll show you what I mean. So here we can go into maybe the advanced settings. Let's check out advanced settings. Nope. Um, as you can see, I'm really not that great at using this. Oh, system settings. That's what I was looking for. So this is kind of your overview of all of your system settings, uh, your desktop effects. And again, uh, you know, to just change the, for me, one of the issues with KDE is that um, if I had maybe like 10 hours to dedicate to like really playing around with all of these effects and really kind of figuring out my workflow, then I may be more inclined uh, to experiment with it and, and use it. Unfortunately, I just don't have that time. So, so for me, I look for more of a desktop that's closer uh, to uh, my uh, the workflow that I want, kind of out of the box. Um, again, what's really neat about this is, like I said, it's highly configurable, and the configuration is done through a graphical user interface. Unlike some of the other stuff I'll show you, where either you can't configure it or it has to be done through text files or or like a like a script kind of thing. Um, so the, again, not nearly as user friendly. So um, if you are the type of person that really wants a lot of configuration through like a uh, graphical user interface, recommend KDE. Uh, this will be for you because uh, compared to all the other desktop environments out there, I think this is one of the most configurable as far as a graphical user interface is concerned. So um like the other time uh let's see when was it <laughs> last week i was trying to oh, what was i trying to do i was trying to figure out the um window behavior because i wanted the um the alt tab i forgot if i switched it or not oh i did do it okay so like when i alt tab like i prefer this instead of the thumbnails and all that stuff and uh, i was playing around with it uh last week and honestly, I can't remember where I found that setting. I eventually found it. It probably took me like 30 minutes, but I eventually found it. So uh, again, part of it is I don't really know how to navigate this that well. But um, the other issue is that there's just so much stuff that it just can be overwhelming. So um, let's see. Oh, here it was. Show text icon cover switch. Okay, so eventually, oops, I got to hit apply. So yeah, so this is how I would. So uh, 
again, it's neat that, that I have this option. I think with Cinnamon, I didn't have the option to set this up. And honestly, I really, really like this. This is how I prefer to, to navigate um, the alt tab windows. And uh, so again, like I, I uh, could see lots of value in this um, compared to some of the other desktop environments. I don't even think I have that option to, to how I want the, uh, con the uh, alt tab to be displayed. So um, let's see, window, you can set up window rules. Uh, these are all advanced settings, uh, window behavior. We can, you know, this is basically with with double clicking, and a lot of the, again, a lot of the other desktop environments have uh, similar type settings. It's just not to this degree. It's uh, pretty impressive what you can actually change and do. As far as stability and stuff like that goes, um, I've heard that uh, KDE is one of the heavier desktop environments, but I think you can uh, 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 configure it so that it's maybe not quite so heavy. And I think um, over the iterations of, of different um, of KDE being released, I think that that's been streamlined a lot. And um, I don't think it's quite as heavy as it used to be. Uh, again, I don't really use it. Um, I think the most I've used it for is maybe like a couple of days just to play around with, just to see if it was for me. I found out it wasn't for me, and that's pretty much all I know about it. But uh, I did want to show it off real quick uh, just to show you um, y you know, all the settings that you can change and to see if this is something that you would like to investigate farther and maybe use this desktop environment for yourself. So it supports snapping uh, to the side. It supports quartering. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can change what all of this does. It does maximizing. It, you know, it does everything. So uh, this is uh, what I have right now is Kate. This is the default text editor in uh, KDE uh, desktop environment. Again, you can install G uh, GTK3 or GTK2 apps. Um, uh, they work just fine. Uh, but uh, you're going to get kind of the best layout with stuff that's kind of KDE, that, that's built for KDE because you'll get the most options and things will just kind of integrate uh, a little bit better. So... Um, you know, again, this, this text editor has lots and lots of features. It has tons of settings. Uh, you can go in and um, change a lot of uh, the keyboard shortcuts. You can configure Kate. Uh, it's pretty impressive. And of course, you have some of the more um, um, what I would consider the. Uh, I forgot how to invoke it. Hold on, let me see if I can find it. Um, basically. Uh, you, you have stuff where you can do the expose mode. Let's see if I can... I don't know the keyboard shortcut for that. Oh. Of... <laughs> Behavior. Okay, so this is where you could configure the, the screen edges and uh, what's triggered. For what? Oh, presents Windows All Desktop. And then up here we'll present grid. Apply. Oh, I was hoping that would work for hot corner. Hmm. Okay, um, that did not work how I thought it was going to. I am in virtual box, so maybe that's part of it. Maybe that's just for tiling. I don't know. Um, desktop effects, maybe. Track mouse zoom window management. Okay, here we go. Desktop grid control F ten. Let's see if this works. Ah, okay. So yes, this is more like the um, expose mode. Oh, and that's neat. You can actually uh you can type and it automatically comes up. Actually, that looks hmm, that looks pretty good. Uh, what I really like is the the filtering ability. Um, uh, Unity Ubuntu fourteen point oh four and Unity has this, and like I find that just fantastic. Uh, now. What I would do is I would not set that up to control F10 because that's just, uh, to me, that's way too hard. So like I would maybe do like Windows W, oops, custom, there we go, okay, 
There we go. So so now I've got, I just set that up so that's a, a much quicker action. So I like that. Let's check out desktop grid. Show desktop grid, control F8. Let's see if this is what I think it is. Oh, I don't have another, there we go. Oops, control F8, okay. And again, what I would do is I would put this to like control S. Uh, conflicts with the kind of stop current activity. We'll reassign that. That's fine for now. Control S. So um, what I learned from this is actually KDE. Uh, if you know, if I wanted to invest the time, KDE might be something I would I would use on a more uh, full time basis. I mean. Um, uh, I mean, that's kind of why I'm doing these videos, just to see and, and kind of play around with it. I mean, I haven't played around with KDE that much. Um, I, again, I still stand by the, the fact that I do think it's very overwhelming, the amount of information I have. But, you know, if I get time and spend an hour here and there, maybe I'll, uh, I don't know, maybe I'll decide that uh, it's uh, something I would like to uh, play around with more. Um, it definitely has a lot of potential. And uh, the next thing I would want to question is just stability. And if this thing was is pretty stable, then uh, uh, I would uh, be interested in maybe setting this up uh, more of a full-time basis. All right, so uh, that's pretty much it for this. Uh, as always, thanks for watching, and uh, catch you later.